Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series and we're going into game week 5. We're going to start by looking at how game week 4 could have gone for you but before that I need to say a couple of things about this series. First off we're heading for the top 5% not top of the whole tree. So that means the way we play is quite conservative at times and it means sometimes there's a player that's very popular that's being brought in that we're not buying at the moment. Um, or there might be a player who's going to have a very good game week probably, but either side it's not so good. So for example, if you watch other content creators, they're all raving about Sun from Tottenham, who's very, very good. And he may have a brilliant game week this week at home to Sheffield United. He's not currently in our system, but last game week was his first good game week. And the next two game weeks are very poor potentially for Spurs. I think there are... I think they're away to Arsenal than home to Liverpool. So he may not do so well there. So we may well add him to our system, but it'll probably be game week eight before we do that. We do have other Tottenham players. However, before you get too disappointed with that, if you go back to game week one, Chilwell did well, and lots of content creators then started saying, oh, get in Chilwell, get in Chilwell, and he's not been so good since then. Game week three, Sterling did very well. So they're all raving about Sterling, bringing him in for game week four, and he did nothing. Game week four, Sun did well, and now they're all raving about Sun. So just because all the content creators are raving about someone doesn't mean they're going to be good. I remember last year before Christmas, sometime before Christmas, they were all going on about Saka and Foden, and they're all breaking their teams to get Saka and Foden in. And I didn't bring them in. In my video, I said I'm not bringing them in. And they were getting zeros and ones for the next few weeks, and it was like, it just didn't work. And it's, it's quite amusing sometimes to look back at content creators videos I do it a lot and it's it's funny I get a lot of things wrong but it's comforting to know that they do too <laughs> okay what other things to say so we have a double game week's been announced for game week seven that is Luton and Burnley have both got an extra game but Burnley's fixtures aren't great for the double and either side they're not great so we're not bringing in any extra Burnley players but there are a couple of Luton players that we're going to make available you don't need to bring them in but they're there if you want them OK, I think that's all the announcements done. So now we can get on to look at how game week four could have gone. As per last week, I'll try and whiz through game week four and what could have happened. And this assumed a 4-4-2 formation. So of the keepers, they didn't do great. They could have got you an average of two. The first set of defenders, generally not great as well. They got an average of 6.6. .6. The second set of defenders, assuming two from this page, average of four so that was all very poor now the midfielders the first page of midfielders that was nice a lot more green here that was an average of 11.2 second set of midfielders assuming a couple from here there's an average of 7.8 not so good and then for the forwards assuming one of these that was an average of 7.4 but of course most of us would have had Haaland and most of us would have captained Haaland and then the second page of forwards an average of 5.4 now what's interesting about these scores and also when we look forward to the next game week we often see that midfielders and forwards are expected on average to do better than defenders and keepers which is why generally we have more defenders on the bench and we have less money in defence than the other positions. Goalkeepers. Edison. So Man City defensively are very good and it's feasible the next three games away to West Ham, home to Forest, away to Wolves could be three clean sheets. On the other hand, West Ham have been very attacking this year. Forest do tend to score. And Wolves are a bit random as well. So there could be three completely non-clean sheets. They could let in a goal each time. So that's why I think it's not worth spending lots of money on your keepers. Because at the moment, we just don't have a good enough feel for which keepers are going to consistently keep clean sheets and get points. And which ones may be less so. So Edison 5.6. Ramsdale at 5. Away to Everton. 50-50 chance at least that Everton are scoring that one. Then they're home to Tottenham and derby matches are always dodgy. When you're looking at two teams, whether it's Liverpool, Everton, Arsenal, Tottenham, Portsmouth, Southampton, when it's a derby match, form kind of goes out the window a bit and it's like, it's a lot more even than you'd think. So I think Tottenham Arsenal is going to be a difficult one to call. Now Man United, if you could go back a few years and you knew Man United were going to be at home to Brighton, away to Burnley, home to Palace, home to Brentford, that would be like four banker clean sheets. 
However, Brighton are very good at attack. Brentford are very good at attack. And this season, Man United are shocking at defence. So if I had an Arna, I wouldn't be selling him, but I definitely wouldn't be buying him. And as for these three keepers, I wouldn't be bringing any of these in at the moment, but I wouldn't be selling them either. Probably true for all the keepers. Then we have Flecken for Brentford. He's got a good chance of getting points in any game because he will tend to get a lot of saves because their defence make players shoot from a fair distance. So it's a bit easier to save the goals. But they're away to Newcastle this week. Newcastle are very attacking, have a good chance of scoring. But then home to Everton, that could be a clean sheet the following week. Johnston so he's not so clear for Palace he's there's a chance that he's not going to be the first choice keeper soon so it's hard to know where he fits in so I wouldn't be bringing in Johnston in if I didn't have him and I had to make a transfer for a keeper but equally I wouldn't be selling him just yet either Pickford hasn't done very well so far but he is an excellent keeper and he's very entertaining last game week he got an own goal a couple of great saves at the end so I've got Pickford. I'm intending to keep Pickford for now. And then Turner for Forrest. It's possible he's not going to be first choice after a while. So in summary, personally, I wouldn't be making any keeper changes. If I was wild carding, who would I get now? I don't know. Possibly, possibly Edison and Flecken. I don't know. It's really tough, to be honest. Uh, hopefully none of you do need to wildcard, in which case you can forget about the keepers. Regarding the first set of defenders, OK, Trent is currently flagged as injured. But if he's not injured, then he's a great player to have. Away to Wolves, home to West Ham. Even if he doesn't keep a clean sheet, very good chance of getting an assist. Trippier, Newcastle are coming up to some good games. Although Brentford are good at attack, which is their next game. Newcastle have a very good chance of keeping a clean sheet against anyone. Trippier's got a good chance of getting an assist against any team. Trippier's in my team. I'm certainly very happy to have him. Chilwell has been a bit not as um, good as people have been hoping, especially after game week one when lots of people brought him in. But they're away to Bournemouth. Reasonable chance of clean sheet. Then they're at home to Aston Villa. Villa haven't been great on the road, so another chance of a clean sheet there. Away to Fulham, who've been having trouble scoring goals. So the next four games for Chilwell, they're OK. Estupinan, away to Man United. United are probably going to score. Estupinan probably won't get a clean sheet. I've seen lots of content creators saying they're putting him on their bench if they've still got him. I'm intending to play Estupinan because Man United can't defend. And there's a reasonable chance Estupinan will be involved in a goal, at least by my reckoning. Uh, James... Flagged as injured, but he may be back. We don't know. So if you've got James, I would think he's worth keeping for now. But I wouldn't bring him in this week unless you happen to hear before the weekend that he's definitely starting. Saliba's probably worth playing. Away to Everton. Akanji's good. Anderson. So this is a new player. Introduced a new colour here. Looked bright yellow. So he's a Luton defender. He's only four million. And I've put him on this page simply because there's an extra space on this page to fit him in. So in three game weeks time, they're away to Everton and a home to Burnley. Reasonable chance of a decent score that week. So he's worth bringing in if you've got nothing else to do and you want to swap him for one of your other defenders so you're probably not going to play anyway. So I'm probably going to bring in Anderson this week. Probably, not definitely. Just because otherwise I'll be losing a free transfer. Regarding the second page of defenders, Porro at home to Sheffield United. Very good chance of a clean sheet, assuming he plays there. Then away to Arsenal and home to Liverpool, not so good, but then away to Luton. So probably wouldn't bring him in this game week, but I would definitely play him if I had him. Gabriel away to Everton, worth having. Udogi's very good. Seems to be more nailed on, more chance of playing than Porro. So... He would be one that's worth doing a transfer. If you've got two free transfers or even one and you want to change a defender, Udogi's probably worth bringing in for this game week. And he might do something the next two game weeks. He may not. Obviously, he might. He might not. But he's he's an all right That's one that's understandable to bring in. And of course, we don't have Sun. So there's not many options to get in Tottenham players. I think we've only got three Spurs players in here. Colwell for Chelsea. 
Chelsea haven't been so good. He's not super attacking, but he's only 4.5 million. This is the page of cheaper defenders. Pinnock, Brentford are very good, but they're away to Newcastle. I wouldn't expect anything this week from him. Botman's flagged as injured, but he may play. And Newcastle are coming up to a good string of fixtures. So I definitely wouldn't bring Botman in this week. But equally, if I had him, I wouldn't be desperate to sell him either. Again, unless we hear for sure he's going to be out for a while. Bayer, Burnley, he's just someone to sit on your bench, really. Uh, but in three game weeks time, he has got a double. However, even if I've still got him in three game weeks time, there's a reasonable chance I'll not be playing him. And then Bulldog, who's currently flagged as injured, possibly not playing. We don't know for sure. Regarding the midfielders, and I'm aware, by the way, that I'm not giving much advice here regarding who to play. But the reason for this system is the way it works. If you kind of have any mix of these players and you pick the right bench, you're probably going to do all right. I'm just trying to help influence your decisions a little bit if you want a bit of help. So now on to the midfielders and you'll see there's a lot of green here. Salah, Rashford, Saka, Odegaard, Fernandes, Martinelli, Madison, Foden. Now of these, Madison has probably got the best chance of getting the best score this coming game week. So if you wanted to buy in a decent midfielder with whatever your strategy is, Madison would be a good one to have. And he's such a good player that even when he's away to Arsenal home to Liverpool he's still worth playing so if I was wild carding now or had nothing else to do and had a problem in midfield I'd be very comfortable getting in Madison and then the slightly cheaper midfielders Sterling should be good good on paper he's got some good fixtures coming up Embremo has done very well okay he's a way to Newcastle this game week Newcastle are good defensively but I've got Embremo, I intend to keep him and I'll be playing him this week. Mitoma, I've got Mitoma, I'll be playing this week. Away to United, as I mentioned earlier, United can't defend. Eze for Palace, and then we're getting the cheap ones now. Gibbs White, Casemiro, Lerma, Nakamba. Those last four are mostly bench fodder, but Gibbs White, home to Burnley, he's got a reasonable chance of getting something there. The forwards, I've kept Haaland as green. I think he's the only green one, but... You really want to try and get him in your team if you haven't got him at the moment. He's so highly owned. He often gets good points. He's going to really hurt you if you don't have him. Watkins, home to Palace. Aston Villa, by my reckoning, has been a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde at home. They seem to be very good. Away, they seem to be a little bit dodgy. So, um, home to Palace, away to Chelsea, home to Brighton. Watkins could get some points there. If I was wildcarding, I wouldn't bring him in. If I had him... I wouldn't sell him this week unless I had to. Jesus, he's back fit again. We're expecting him to play. Absolutely worth buying. If you can bring him in and you've got nothing else to do, it's probably worth doing. Would I swap Watkins for Jesus? Possibly. Possibly. I think over the long run, Jesus will certainly do better than Watkins. Wilson, now he's a bit of an enigma because he's a very good player, but he only seems to come on for 20 or 30 minutes at a time at the moment but he does keep getting goals and or assists so I wouldn't buy him but if I had him I wouldn't be desperate to sell him either Darwin he's been a lot of fun the last couple of game weeks away to Wolves Wolves can't defend home to West Ham he's got a reasonable chance for some points in the next couple of game weeks assuming he plays I wouldn't be bringing him in but if I had him I'd be very happy to play him and then Jackson's been disappointing but Chelsea have some good fixtures coming up I have Jackson. I'm intending to keep him at the moment. Then regarding the cheaper forwards, Alvarez, very good. Nice games coming up. He's worth having. Solanke, we're getting to slightly cheaper players now. Home to Chelsea, difficult. Away to Brighton, maybe difficult, but Brighton defence isn't great. Home to Arsenal, not great. Away to Everton. So if you had Solanke, you wanted to switch him to Alvarez and you could afford the extra point to, you had nothing else to do. That's probably worth doing. Vissa for 6.2. I've got Vissa. I intend to keep him at least for the next few games. Newcastle's a bit difficult, but then home to Everton, away to Forest, away to Man United. If Man United don't improve, then that's a nice fixture to target there. Morris, this is another brand new player bringing in then. So Luton striker, only 5.5. Away to Fulham, then home to Wolves, and then they've got Everton and Burnley. So he's worth having for game week seven, potentially. 
But if you want to bring him in now because you've got a problem player somewhere or you want to shuffle people around, he's okay to get, but don't expect too much for the next couple of game weeks. Yeah, well, Pedro for Brighton. It's hard to know when he's going to play and what he's going to do. And he is away to Man United this week. I know I've been saying how bad Man United defence are, but I would rather have Matoma or a Stupinan than Pedro. So if you had nothing else to do, you could swap Pedro for Morris this week, perhaps. Adebayo for Luton. He'd be sitting on your bench if you've got him, probably. And then Mubama for West Ham. Again, sitting on the bench. So the bench order, the way the bench works, the first player you see that I show you that you've got goes on your bench. So for your keepers, I'm suggesting, but do what you like, Palace away to Villis, Villa, probably won't get a clean sheet. Johnson's on your bench. Flecken away to Newcastle, not expecting a clean sheet on your bench. Pickford at home to Arsenal. Home advantage does make a big difference. Arsenal are going to have a lot of shots, so even if he lets in a goal, he gets some save points. Yes, they might get thrashed 5-0, and he was a very bad choice, but if you had any of if you had two of those three and you wanted Pickford on your bench, I'd understand that. If I had two of these three, I'd certainly be playing Pickford of this lot. Then Onana, he has got the home advantage, although I've been saying bad things about their defence. He is at least at home. Turner at home to Burnley. Ramsdale away to Everton, but it is Arsenal there, good. And then finally, Edison. So if you've got Edison, you're definitely playing him. And now this week, I remembered I, I really should put my glasses on. Because it's so small and I struggle to read it. Getting old, look at that. So the first player you see, I'm suggesting that you've got put in the bench in the third position. The next player you've got in the second position. The third player you've got in the first position. But of course, you can't have three from the same position on the bench. As in, you can't have three defenders, three midfielders or three forwards on your bench. So Mubama for West Ham. Bulldog for Sheffield United. Pinnock for Brentford. Anderson for Luton. Nakamba for Luton. Bayo for Burnley. Lerma for Palace. Adibayo for Luton. Colwell for Chelsea. Gio Pedro for Brighton, a Candy for Man City, Casemiro for Man United, a Stupnam for Brighton, Morris for Luton, Visser for Brentford, James for Chelsea, Botman for Newcastle. Now, hopefully, most of you have got two or three of these players, and that's your bench full because we're going to start getting into the better players. Also, I'll have James here and Botman who are potentially injured, Bulldogs potentially injured. But I'm kind of hoping they'll either get no minutes or a decent chunk of minutes. So if they get no minutes, it doesn't matter. And who cares? And remember, these are just suggestions. If you want to change things about yourself, that's absolutely fine. Solanke for Bournemouth. Eze for Palace. Mitoma for Brighton. and Embuemo for Brentford. Wilson for Newcastle. Chilwell for Chelsea. See, if Chilwell and James were both fit, I'd probably have James above Chilwell. But... What if James comes on for the last 20 minutes? Then it's going to be annoying if you had him. Gabriel for Arsenal. Saliba for Arsenal. Darwin for Liverpool. Gibbs White for Forest. Martinelli for Arsenal. Trent for Liverpool. Porro for Tottenham. Udogi for Tottenham. Odegaard for Arsenal. Jesus for Arsenal. Jackson for Chelsea. Alvarez for Man City. And there are 10 players that aren't on this list because you'll be playing them. Regarding the captaincy. Well... Haaland's going to be the most popular and I think most of us probably should play Haaland. You don't have to. There are other options. You could go for Madison. Tottenham have a reasonable good chance of getting some goals this weekend. Madison's got a very good chance of being involved in the goals. But if you go for Madison and Haaland outscores Madison, you're in for a whole world of pain. Salah for Liverpool. He's been pretty solid so far. He's been averaging over five points each game week. He's always got at least five. So he's all right. Sterling, a bit of a punt. He's only had one good week so far. And then we have Saka for Arsenal away to Everton. Now that Jezus is back, Saka could be involved in more goals. The more chance that when he passes it into the, into the six-yard box, it's actually going to get into the net. So there's more chance of an assist there. But Haaland has to be the best choice, surely. And in case you're wondering about the picture, the other morning, that's that's supposed to be a sparrowhawk there going for the ball. Look at that, both feet off the ground. So you know some referees are going to get the red straight out and say, you can't do that, it's dangerous. Yeah, the other morning, I saw this bird on our front lawn and I took a little film of it. If I can, I'll try and put it up on the screen just now. 
and I didn't know what it was. We didn't know what it was. So I put it on Facebook asking people's opinion and their most popular opinion was that it was a sparrowhawk. So I thought, I well, know, I'll do that for my picture in this video. So there we have it. Look, I've kept the glasses on. That's our plans for game week five. A lot of our players are away this week and we may not get a great score, but there will be some game weeks coming up where we should be getting some very good scores and hopefully we won't fall behind too much and we're only going for top 5% anyway. We're not going for top half a percent. That would require a lot more messing about and I'd have to have far fewer players. I want to kind of keep it a little bit relaxed. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the weekend. Bye.